Hello friends, today we'll be talking about The Darkness That Comes Before by R. Scott Baker. And you have, you have no idea how many times I tried to film that introduction. But <laughs> Before we get into the review, I think it's important to mention how I structure my reviews, just so if you're new to my reviews and my videos that, that talk about different books. Uh, in my reviews, I, like, I don't like to give you any spoilers. I try and leave it as spoiler-free as possible. I will give you a couple of very minor story points, but if you read the synopsis, you'd know about it. I like to go into books blind. I don't. I oftentimes avoid the synopsis if I can, because I don't like to have anything spoiled for me. I'm weird like that. So while I'm not going to give you a beat by beat of what happened in the story, I will give you my takeaways and the thoughts I had coming away from the book and give you an idea whether or not it may be for you or not for you. Before I started The Darkness That Comes Before, I had heard it's basically quintessential grimdark. You have to just read it if you want to, to know the genre. It's a staple in the genre. And I want to learn more about Grimdark. That's kind of my goal for 2022. And I thought it's time to read this, this series. And I jumped into it. Now, I did hear how violent and disturbing it was. And the first 200 pages, I didn't really notice anything out of the ordinary. It was pretty pretty run by the numbers, nothing too crazy. And right around two or 300 pages, it's like, oh, okay. All right, that's where that comes from. So yeah, it does get very dark. The most disturbing parts weren't wasn't really violence. There is some combat scenes. The combat scenes don't last very long. They're short and effective, and that's the way I like my combat scenes. When combat goes on for pages and pages, it almost, it, it just, I, I get lost in it and it just doesn't have the impact. If it's short and to the point and people die and people survive or people are maimed or wounded or whatever, that holds more of an impact for me as a reader whenever I'm reading these types of stories. The most disturbing parts of the book isn't combat, isn't violence. It's what these characters have gone through, what they continue to go through, their hopelessness, their suffering. It really gets you, you can feel it. And there's, there's some really dark and bleak moments in the book, some characters that just cannot catch a break. And there was even some characters that, and I won't spoil who, but there's some characters that are suffering in a really bad situation. And either if they left, they would end up in a worse situation or they don't leave because they don't think they deserve any better. They think this is what I deserve. This is who I am, I deserve to suffer. And and really, I think that's something we can all relate to in some way, shape or form is we've all been in bad situations and we've all been in situations where we don't, when we know it's a bad situation, but we don't get out of it because we don't think we deserve better. I think that's something that for me, it really, really caught me, really tugged to the heartstrings. And the writing and the setup for these characters and their the explaining who these characters are, what they've been through, was just done masterfully. I mean, it, it really pulls you in. You feel like you know these characters. Uh, there are many POVs, but unlike other books that switch often, this book, I think almost all the time, there's a separate chapter. So you spend a lot of time with certain POVs. You'll, you'll spend lots of time with a set of characters. You get into what they're doing, and it's not so jarring when you switch back to the other set of characters. And this book is dense. There's lots of information in it. There's lots of things that happen. There's lots of characters. They have the, the, the longer fantasy names that I typically don't enjoy because I struggle keeping up with so many characters, especially when their names are so long. It's, it's sometimes it's hard for me to keep up. And the first half or so I was pretty, I wouldn't say confused, but I was struggling. I wasn't struggling either, but I was just, I would have to think, okay, who is this person? And I had to kind of you know, resettle myself and say, okay, this is this person that I read a hundred pages ago. Okay. I got it now. I didn't have a solid grasp on who was who, but towards the end of the book, the last 20% or so, I had a really good understanding of who was who, where they were, what they were doing, what their intentions were. I had a, a really good idea of who everyone was and you were still learning about the world, but the world started to come together you start learning the different the different tribes, the different uh, battles, the different the different schemes, the politics. I mean, there's a lot going on, but I do think, toward, especially towards the end, there there were times when I was confused on who was who. But I think it was done deliberately that they would tie R. Scott Baker would tie 
those strings back for you. So if you forgot, there were moments when it would almost remind you like, oh, this is this person from along, you know, you read in the first couple hundred pages. That really helped out a lot. And I was really surprised. This is R. Scott Baker's first book, The Writing. There are some passages, there are some sections in this book that I read over and over and over. Just beautiful writing. And I don't do that too often. I mean, there are times I've done that before. It's not unusual, but to happen so many times in a book, in a book like this, I mean, just wonderful writing. There's also lots of setup. A lot of all the different plot lines come together towards the end of the book. The first 75%, the, things do happen, but it's a lot of setup. And when I say setup, I think most people think, oh, shit, it's bo that's boring, but it's actually fun. It's, it's not, it's funner at the end. Don't get me wrong. It's funner when you see, you know, you see personalities collide and, and all that kind of thing. But the, the journey in the setup was enjoyable. I really, really did enjoy all the setup, even though I knew it was set up, if that makes sense. Now, there were also times when things felt drawn out, but it didn't feel too drawn out. It was still, it was still going along with the story. It wasn't like a side quest or tangents. So it, if you, you felt like it was part of the story, that it was a little drawn out, but not enough to really be too annoying. If you're concerned about the violence and brutality in the book, you may want to look into it a little bit. There is some, there are some pretty disturbing scenes and some characters that just cannot catch a break and just have, I mean, just get treated awful. And it's the kind of book where someone's not going to come and save them. You know, most of the time that they're in the situation and, and they're in it till they die. I mean, it's, there is a, there is a, some hopelessness. There's some um, in the suffering and it's, it's finding the, the meaning to the suffering. I think they even allude to that in the book at one point. So there's not a lot of punches pulled here. There are some pretty dark storylines, but they're the world that they build. The characters are great. All of them are morally gray there. You'll hate one of them. One scene, you'll like them. The next scene, it is a roller coaster. It is uh, a book that has kept me thinking, you know, I, this is one of those books that I would read. And the next day at work, I would think about it. You know, the next day when I couldn't be reading it, I would think about it. I would try to connect dots. I would try to, to, to guess where things are going to go. I mean, I, I was, I was drawn in to this world and I'm, I'm hooked on this series. I think it's going to be great. The only downside is the size. And I did want to mention, cause people have asked me before about the construction of the books, this book I bought from Amazon. And while it is pretty good, it, it is fingerprint, uh, as fingerprint magnet. And for some reason, my copy had this page in the back that was torn out. And I think it's just a matter of how they shipped it because Amazon sometimes just throws a book in the, uh, in a box and ships it to you. But Overall, pretty good at construction. I didn't bend the spine. You know, I'm, I'm careful about that sort of thing. But as you can see, it is a fingerprint magnet. So if that is important to you, I think overall, I would say it's not the best quality because I, I, I have other books that are feel sturdier, but it is a matte finish and it is fairly thick stock. As far as complaints go, I think the only complaint I had while reading this was there a couple scenes that I was trying to visualize what characters look like and I couldn't, I, I couldn't visually, I couldn't have them in my mind because their clothing or their presentation wasn't explained that great. Sometimes it's a minor, it's a minor gripe, but it was something that I thought about a couple of times, you know, you, you go into a situation and they're you know, we're explaining what's happening in the scene and you just can't get a visual. You can't feel the picture. You can, see the picture, but th when you start trying to imagine those little details, like what their clothing is, what they're wearing, what weapons they have, it gets cloudy. Lately, when I've been reading, I'll take pictures of certain pages when I'm reading. And typically I take, and then I'll, I'll go back after and I'll, I'll write some notes down from the pages that I took pictures on just because I don't want to, I'm lazy. I don't want to get up from my comfortable position in my chair, lean up, grab the pen, write. It, it takes me out of the story when I can just take a picture of it. And later when I'm done reading, I'll go back and I'll write notes from the pages I took pictures of. I usually take, I don't know, 10 pictures of a book. I took so many pictures of the pages in this book. It's ridiculous. There's so many lines in it. There's so many paragraphs that, man, it's just great. It's just great. Just, 
I kept reading them over and over and I even kept going back to read it, to read these passages and these sentences over and over just because just one of those times you just like makes you feel good when you, when you read things like this. So I am good thing. It goes without saying that I am in this for the long haul. I'll be reading the next book, hopefully soon, but I can squeeze it in. So if anyone wants to join, join me on this, on this journey, uh, let me know. I, it'll probably won't be till next month, but if you'd like to read with me, uh, let me know and we'll try and make it happen. So the, the line that stood out the most for me, now this is very tough because there's a ton, but I just had to pick one. The line that stuck out the most to me was, it was uncanny the way certain days defied the passage of years, become virulent and plagued to the present as an undying yesterday. I read that sentence. I couldn't tell you how many times. I mean, that happened too often, more often than I like to admit. Another thing I want to bring up that I don't think comes up often enough is for horror readers who want to get into fantasy, who, who see fantasy as this, you know, like this uh, typical epic traditional fantasy thing where it seems really like swords and shields and the good guys always win and the bad guys always die or they get, you know, whatever they get punished. I think for those people who are curious about fantasy, who want to get into fantasy, who are willing to, to take the leap and they like the dark and disturbing stories and they, they want to try fantasy, look into grimdark, look into these kind of books. There's some suggestions I could give, but I think if you want to dive deep into a dense book, a dense, disturbing, uh, just a, a great book. If you're a horror reader looking for fantasy to get into, and you're willing to take the leap, try it out. I suggest trying it out. It is a longer book. I think most horror books are on the shorter side. So it is, it is a longer book, but I think it would surprise a lot of people who haven't tried this genre of uh, dark fantasy, grimdark, whatever you want to call it. This is one of those books. I know I say this a lot, but it's one of those books you just want to talk about when you're done. There's so much that happens in it. There's so many things that you're looking forward to. There's surprises. There's these characters that you just grow to become attached to, that you grow to hate, that you grow to love. The, you grow to feel for, I mean, just a, a really, really great experience. And it's, these are the kind of books that change, that have changed my perception on fantasy and on reading and had a really great time with it. So have you read the dark, the darkness that comes before by R. Scott Baker? If you have, let me know down below what you would rate it. As always, I hope this review is helpful or let's, let's talk about video is helpful. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.